Good afternoon, everyone. And on behalf of the team, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all PSG leaders and members, school representatives, parents and leaders from the community and parents in support of schools or campus in short. So the theme for today's session is partnering together, bringing out the best in our children. So together with you, we really hope to strengthen school home industry partnership, support you in bringing out the best in your child and let's continue to grow as a PSG community together by learning from each other. We hope that you'll walk away feeling more inspired to reach out and build meaningful partnerships. And lastly, we hope you can feel equipped, okay, with tips to better support your children to thrive. Hello, a very good afternoon to all of you. Without you and your support, without all the various PSGs, campus, in the various schools, we will not have gotten so far. And we will not be able to go very much further unless we have your support and partnership. And I'll explain why. You have probably heard enough from me that the world is moving fast, that the half-life for skills have shortened considerably. And in my many previous conversations with many of you, you have also highlighted your, kid, your concerns, your fears. If we are doing the right thing to prepare our students adequately for the future. Some of your usual questions are what kind of skill sets should we equip them? What kind of jobs will they have? And so forth. And one of the often unspoken thing is how do we equip ourselves to equip our children? All of us as parents, we are quite shy. We like to send our children to all kinds of classes to learn all kinds of things. But we are quite shy to go to the classes ourselves. But many of you have quietly told me that actually we also need help as parents. Because the questions that we pose for our children are also the questions that we need to pose for ourselves. What do we think will be the first question the potential employer will ask our child. If we have to name the top three jobs in 10 years' time, what will they be? Again, in 10 years' time, what do you think will be the number one skill that our children must all have? Today, the typical lifespan of even a Fortune 500 company has gone from 50 years to 15 years. And even the same company, if they are still around for 15 years, chances are that their entire product range would have changed. And it would have changed every few years. The trick is really, how can we close the loop between frontier industry practice and needs with what we are doing in our schools? I hope that we will move from the school being our world to the world being our school. And this is why today we are going to launch this A World Beyond School a series of dialogues and conversations to equip educators and parents with the latest knowledge of what is happening beyond the school in the world to prepare our children. Collectively, as you work hard as PSG to support us, it is also our duty in MOE to work hard behind the scene to equip you to support the students and partner our educators. I know a lot of you, you have a lot of special skills talents and networks that you can bring to us. And I will hope that your special skills, talent and network is not limited to just contribution in one particular school. Many of what you are contributing in one particular school can be shared and proliferated across different schools for everyone to benefit. I hope this broadening takes place in two dimensions. The first dimension of broadening is to broaden beyond academics into the various kinds of skill sets and perspective that will be useful for our children in the future. But there is another dimension of broadening our definition of success that I hope to inspire our children to embrace. And that is that we define success not just by our achievements, but by our contributions. And this is fundamental to the success of Singapore in the next level. If all of us only define success by our personal achievement rather than our collective contribution, we will be a narrow country and we may even end up as a high-achieving but self-centred country. 
but for us to be a much more heartwarming society, for us to be an inclusive society, then we need to broaden our definition of success beyond personal achievement to collective contributions. My favourite question that I always ask is that what is it that you expect from our company to be able to do for you? So the thinking behind that is to really assess right, the person's ability to self-think what are his or her strengths and weaknesses in terms of development gaps right, and to really assess whether this person is able to justify and reason right, why the response was as well. The positive example that I'm very encouraged by a lot of the schools is that over time, I see more and more parents supporting the school to have a less structured environment. We need an environment that is uh, fail-safe. Actually, the correct environment could be safe-fail rather than fail safe. That means you never fail. If we never fail, we will never learn. One of the key uh, parenting principles that me and wife, my wife take is that we always allow our kids to explore and experiment themselves right, since they were young. And this is perhaps, you know, in Chinese we call it zi ye ping because I'm a HR leader so I, I bring some of my concepts of how I develop people back into the, my family life as well. So in P5, we brought our children over to Pattaya, which is an uh, orphanage uh, itself. And uh, in the orphanage, there were children with AIDS, uh, physically, mentally disabled, abandoned children, and so forth. And they got to spend uh, around two weeks there. Right? So my eldest girl and my eldest boy, the age gap is only one year apart. And of course, the conversation of my daughter you know, about her future, what she wants to do, uh, spilled over to my, my eldest boy. And when that conversation about what they wanted to do with my daughter also came about, my son said, Dad, I want to be a lawyer in the future. And at Sec 3, and that was actually very, very odd of him. And I asked why. And he said, Dad, you remember in P5, we went to this trip, uh, this mission trip itself. And that experiment, uh, he told me that, rubbed off him in a very, very strong manner. He said, how can people abandon children? Where is that medical you know, need for these kids? And so forth. And his view was that to be a lawyer, therefore he then can defend the rights of children into the future. I said, well, that's, that's pretty good justification. right?" So I think the experiment uh, trip that we did itself led on to him deciphering for himself, uh, internalizing what he saw, what he felt, and justifying his position. And it's very similar in the workplace. We always ask, like budget setting, why do you need this? What's your justification and so forth? You know, as parents, uh, I when I remember you know um, asking my kids, uh, pushing them towards the STEM area, S T E M itself, right? But over the years itself, you know, uh, in terms of the future of work from a leadership standpoint, uh, a lot of research, a lot of studies, a lot of surveys has been done about bringing up a different set of leader in the organisation, which is a more empathetic leader right, uh, itself. So you think about it, if we are pushing our children towards the science, the technology, the engineering and the math itself, perhaps maybe as parents, we can also add the P-A-T-H-Y at the back, Stempathy. Right? Meaning to be able to not only do engineering or do technology for the sake of doing it, but to look at it from a human-centric perspective. And this is what perhaps maybe in the next, not 10 years, but maybe in the next 2-3 years, to have leaders who are more empathetic, all right? uh, more altruistic, more compassionate. I think that's something also uh, the workplace itself are also seeking out as well. So as we develop our children, that compassionate perspective must also uh, come out as well. Recently reading a book, um, How Do You Define Success in Your Life? He, there's a chapter in this book about um, equipping children, you know, and he said that there are three things, resource, process, priorities. 
Second part is a process, you know, application of the resources. How do you use these resources, you know, put these resources to good use? With the knowledge and skills, what do you do with them? And as parents, what do we do to, um, you know, create an environment where our children at home or, you know, in social settings or in schools will be able to apply their knowledge and skills to create things? That's called processing. The last one is called priorities. Priorities is we are in my view more like values. How do you prioritize? You know, if there are so many things that we can do, so many things we can create for ourselves, for others, how do we choose what's important? Um, and this is where I, I think parents also can influence children, our children, on what is important. Is it about chasing grades, academics, or is it about showing kindness, empathy, and helping others? These are priorities that as parents, we can influence um, children in, in their upbringing. Success is not always measured by how much we have, but actually how much we give. I, I think in MOE schools, we will really try our best, you know, to create a, a space for our children to grow, to learn, to become, to have good values, not just have hate knowledge, but like what Min Chan said, you know, um, the hard skills, hand skills as well. Um, and last of all, you know, I'll leave you with this thought. Um, a successful person is not one who has not struggled before, but a person who never gives up despite the struggles. You know? And I think that's how we want our children to grow up. Definitely the future of the workplace, the workforce, is definitely changing. We cannot do it alone. And there's an importance to actually collaborate uh, with multi-parties and everything. So perhaps maybe similar in the PSG groups itself is to also look at <coughs> the resources that PSG members have as well and to collaborate and share that resources, create that safe environment for sharing. Along the way, never feel that you have to walk this journey alone. We need to walk this journey together. That's why this is an exercise for us to share our knowledge, share our networks so that we all can grow faster so that we can know better and then we can help our children much more. So on that note, once again, thank you all very much for helping us to further our mission to grow our children and realise their potential. And I hope that all my students and all our children will grow up confident knowing that they have something special in them. And how do we help them to unleash this? That's provided they know what is out there in the world beyond the school. <music>